Okay, good morning class. Uh, welcome to the online session. Uh, we are going to discuss on the four slides remaining for bone pathology. So we are going to start with 92 Ewing's sarcoma or Ewing's tumor. Uh, we have slide 173 that's fibrous dysplasia. Um, 193 that's giant cell tumor and 254 that's osteosarcoma okay so for Ewing's tumor uh, slide 92 this is uh, this is an uncommon tumor that's account that would account for 6 to 10 percent of all primary malignant tumors so kindly try to okay uh, identify the bony structures the bony trabeculae okay so this would be seen in the younger age bracket 80 percent of these patients are less than 20 years old and uh, they are identified uh, with a mutation gene uh, wherein there's a translocation between the EWS to the FL1. So they would form a fusion gene called the EWS FL1 gene. Uh, these tumors would arise from the diaphysis and uh, they would affect the long tubular bones of the femur as well as the flat bones of the pelvis. So again, for the age bracket, less than 20 years old to 80% of them uh, they would arise from the diaphysis uh, particularly the long bones of the femur as well as the flat bones of the pelvis and there would be a uh, presence of a fusion gene EWS1 uh, EWS FL1 gene okay, so histologically what we would see you have the bony trabeculae present um, so you might mistake this one for other tumors make sure that you identify these structures so there are aggregates of small round cells interspersed in between the bony trabeculae okay so you can see the presence of this uh, this aggregates so look at them on a high power magnification you would see them to be composed of small round cells having uh, scanty clear cytoplasm the clearness of the cytoplasm would be associated with the glycogen substance which would then uh, make them positive for PAS okay so you can see the presence of small round cells with scanty cytoplasm. These cells are positive for CD99, uh, which would uh, be characteristic for most of the uh, tumors that belong to this group, the Ewing sarcoma. Uh, sometimes we would see the presence of homorytrocets okay, here. You can see the presence of this rosette formation. So this is called the homerite rosette. And this would signify a neuroendocrine differentiation. So next slide is a slide 173. Okay, that is fibrous dysplasia. So for fibrous dysplasia, uh, you have to look for an area that would show the presence of the bones because in some areas you would see only fibrous tissue. Okay, so fibrous dysplasia is a benign tumor uh, that is well circumscribed. It affects the bones of the femur, the tibia, the ribs, the jawbone, the calvarium, and the humerus. And this is associated with gain-of-function mutation for GMAS1 gene. Uh, 
there are two uh, syndromes that are associated with it. Uh, we have the Mazabrod, wherein you have Mazabrod syndrome, wherein it is associated with myxoma and fibrous dysplasia. Mazabrod is M A Z A B R A U D. And then we have the McCun Albright syndrome, which affects uh, girls. Uh, it's, it's associated with a polyostotic type of fibrous dysplasia. When you say polyostotic, it affects multiple bones. Um, and then you have the cafe ole spots and then endocrine abnormalities like precocious puberty. So uh, histologically, um, you would see the presence of curvilinear formations of trabe trabecular bones. Okay, Here you would see the curvilinear uh, formation of trabecular bones. Uh, and they would say that it would mimic Chinese characters. Okay. Here. And then take note of the surrounding stroma. Okay, so you have the curvilinear, you have the presence of fibroblastic proliferation in the stroma. Very, very important. Okay, so uh, another thing is when you look at the x ray. Uh, the tumor has a ground glass, ground glass appearance. Okay, so again for fibrous dysplasia, it's benign. Uh, it would show genus mutation. There would be the uh, association with the Maza Broad and Macun Albright. It has a ground glass appearance on X ray with curvilinear trabeculae surrounded by fibroblastic proliferation. Okay, mimicking Chinese character appearance. Okay, so that is fibrous dysplasia. Next, we have uh, GCT or giant cell tumor. Uh, giant cell tumor, of course, by the name alone, you can readily say the or identify its most characteristic feature, and that would be the proliferation of giant cells. So these are the giant cells. Yeah. Okay. So giant cell tumor is also called osteoclastoma yeah, because mainly you would see a lot of those osteoclasts. Although there are the reason why there's the tumor. Okay. So this would be identified in a 20 to 40 year old age bracket. Although sometimes you can have outliers of less than 20 or more than 40. But most of them are 20 to 40s. It is identified in the epiphysis but can extend to the metaphysis. That's why in some cases we it may mimic osteosarcoma. Uh, so and uh, we would see the presence of these osteoclasts like cells. So in the book it says you have nanoplastic osteoclasts. Okay, here you would see the presence of these osteoclasts. They are non-neoplastic. Uh, and what would be expressing the RANKL would be the stromal cells, the mononuclear cells that are present surrounding the or around the matrix. Okay? Which would be the reason why we have the osteoclasts. Okay? Our last slide for today would be osteosarcoma. So osteosarcoma is slide 254. Uh, this is the most common primary malignant tumor of the bone. And this is osteoid matrix producing tumor. And with regards to the age bracket, we have a bimodal distribution composed of number one uh, the younger age bracket that is 75 percent would be younger than 20 years old and then the the second uh, peak would occur in the older age bracket that is elderly with known predispositions to osteosarcoma one of them would be the paget's disease of bone uh, bone infarction if there's uh, osteonecrosis 
and history of prior radiation. So 50% of cases would affect the knee. So it means that it can affect the distal femur or the proximal tibia. Okay. Uh, with, with regards to mutations, 70% of these tumors would show mutations towards the RB, P53, INK4A, MDM2, and CDK4. Okay. So, uh, when we diagnose osteosarcoma, uh, sometimes uh, patients would present with a history of fracture and there's a history of pain on the bones. Okay. And histologically, what we would see would be the presence of atypical cells okay, found in the matrix. So you can see uh, atypical cells with prominent nucleoli. This would be the osteoid matrix that would be surrounding them. Take note that uh, these are made up completely of round cells, no osteoclasts, okay, no fibroblastic proliferation. So you can see the presence of the prominence of the nucleoli. This would be the presence of osteoid uh, matrix, trabeculae, okay. Uh, these are the atypical cells. Here you can see the presence of the atypical cells. So when you are going to view the slide, okay, you can see the presence of this irregularly formed trabeculae. So it's not the typical trabeculae that you would see, okay, uh, which is the lamellar bone. Okay, so it's not the typical appearance. So and then they are surrounded by this typical round cells. Okay, so those are the slides that we have for today. So, thank you and stay safe.